The flowers are so beautiful. It's one of the best seasons. Poom! I'm really happy it's getting warmer. Jimisu, what's your plan this spring season? Whatever it is, make sure to observe proper social distancing and always wear masks, okay? It's me again, Jimmy's, and welcome back to my channel. If you like anything Korean, arts and crafts, and daily dose of kickness and positive vibes, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me in my social media platforms. Wow! This handbook is so beautiful. Wow! 누려요! 이 방주에서 누적가요! 운봉해요! 지미스! Joseon Dynasty is also called E Dynasty, the last and the longest lived imperial dynasty of Korea dated back from 1392 to 1910. It was founded by General Lee Sung Gye, who established the capital at Hanyang, present day Seoul. The regime is also frequently referred to as the E Dynasty for its ruling family. General Yi established close relationship with the neighboring Ming Dynasty of China, which considered Korea a client state and Chinese cultural influences were very strong during this period. Joseon's administration was modeled after Chinese bureaucracy and Neo-Confucianism was adopted as the ideology of the state and society. Under the previous dynasties, Ownership of land was concentrated in the hands of few high-ranking bureaucrats, but Yi Songye, who ruled as King Taejo of Joseon, and his successors redistributed the land throughout the various levels of officials, creating a new aristocracy of scholar officials called Yangban. Oh, I'm seeing a beautiful woman! Wow! Yemungwan. I want to know some of the prominent persons during Joseon Dynasty. Would you know some? Of course. I will know, ma'am. Do you have spare time to share me some stories? Alright. Shall we start with the most popular and wisest king of Joseon Dynasty? Song Hamen, Ido, or much known as the Great King Sejong. King Sejong invented the Korean phonetic alphabet Hangul. Ido ascended the throne at age 22 and carried the name Sejong. His reign lasted for 32 years, and due to the immense cultural and technological advancements that occurred this time, it's usually referred to as the Golden Age. In 1420, King Sejong established an academy of top 20 Confucian scholars to advise him. They are called the Hall of Worthies. The scholars studied the ancient laws and rights of China and previous Korean dynasties, compiled historical texts, and lectured the king and crown prince on Confucian classics. Before the creation of Hangul, Koreans used Chinese characters to write. These were complex and required years to study, hindering common people to learn due to routinary labor. In 1443, Sejong and eight advisors developed an alphabetic system to accurately represent Korean language sounds and sentence structure. Hangul is the Korean's writing system until today and is one of the easiest alphabets in the world. King Sejong's health began to decline even as his accomplishments mounted. Suffering from diabetes and other health problems, Sejong became blind around the age of 50 and passed away at the age of 53. Jimisu, if you want to know the brief background of the creation of Hangul, maybe you can watch the Korean drama, The Tree with Deep Rooted Roots. It starred Jang Myuk, Shin Seo Kyung herself, and actor Han Seo Kyu as King Sejong. King Sejong the Great has a statue at the center of Gwanghwamun Square in Seoul. Moving forward, 
Let's talk about the royal physician, Hojun. Hojun was appointed as court physician at age 29. He wrote many important texts, and the most notable is called Dongye Bugam, or Mirror of the Eastern Medicine. Dongye Bugam is often noted as the defining text of traditional Korean medicine and spread to East Asian countries like China, Japan, and Vietnam. Hojun put a great emphasis on making treatment methods accessible and comprehensible to people by using herb medicines that can easily find but with similar effectivity with rare products. Also, he wrote the names in Hangul letters for easy reading of all people. In 1608, King Sonja died. Government officials, jealous of Ho's illustrious career, accused him of being culpable for the king's death. He was exiled to the countryside Ulju, where he continued to write the book. As the backbone of the Eastern medicine to this day, Dongye Bogam was included in the UNESCO's Memory of the World Register in 2009. Jimmy's, I think Dr. Hojun's work is somewhat alike with the story of the great Jangum. Jangum is said to be the first female royal physician. I'm so proud of our traditional something in the And the last but not the least, Song Hamun Lee Sun Shin, or Admiral Lee Sun Shin. He is a Korean admiral and national hero whose novel victories were instrumental in repelling Japanese invasions of Korea. Appointed as the commander of the naval forces in left Chola province, he concentrated on training his men, stocking equipment and supplies, and developing the renowned Gobokson or Turtle Ship. The Gobokson is thought to have been the first ironclad battleship in history. As a result of his preparations, his forces, unlike most of the Korean military, were ready to fight when the Japanese invaded in 1592. In 1593, Yi was given command of the entire Korean fleet, but following peace negotiations, in 1957, he was falsely accused of disloyalty and demoted to the rank of common soldier. The Japanese then launched a second invasion and succeeded in destroying almost all of the Korean Navy. Yi was reinstated as commander of the few remaining ships and continuing his undefeated battle record, soon restored Korea's control of the seas. He was killed by a stray bullet as he pursued the retreating Japanese forces during the final campaign of the war. Wow! It is an honor to know Korea's national heroes, Guheryong Yaksaganim. It is my pleasure sharing with you the rich history and remarkable legacy of our heroes, young lady. Ah, Guheryong Yaksaganim, can I take a picture with you? Sure. Wow, it's nice to visit the Joseon Dynasty. Jimisu, if you will travel to South Korea someday, make sure to explore the Gwanghwamun Square in Seoul so you can see the statue of King Sejong. <laughs> Jimis, I also want to take this chance to thank all of you who have given your precious time in watching the time travel episodes. This will be the last time travel episode and one of the final episodes of Gyomari Channel. Uh, we will be taking a hiatus starting April, and I don't know when will I be back again. Merojanim ventured into a business, and she really needs to focus more on that account. Uh, it's really sad, but I know we will be back again, someday. My Instagram OOTD account will be active until May, I think. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you again, Jimmy's. If you like anything Korean, arts and crafts, and daily dose of goodness and positive vibe, you can subscribe to my channel and follow me in my social media platforms. Konganghagu, chalsinasayo, naomet tupayo, annyeong!